Hi friends, Mario Cavallo here. Uh, my Chinese name is Ma Yi Jun. Okay, this video is very, very important and very, very specifically. We are going to be talking about China and we're specifically going to be talking about the anniversary of Dr. Li Wunliang, who is uh, unfortunately the doctor who had died in Wuhan, became very, very famous because people were falsely calling him in the West a whistleblower, which he was not a whistleblower at all, not even close to being a whistleblower. It's one of the things that we're going to talk about. But more importantly, it's the anniversary of his death last year, and uh, our hearts and sympathies and empathies go out to his family. His wife was pregnant at the time, and uh, this is, of course, very, very sad and tragic, but anything and everything in life that happens, whether it has to do with the pandemic or not, when we lose a loved one, all of these things in life are sad and tragic and unfortunate. The loss of loved ones is one of the difficulties of life um, that we get through. What I want to talk to you right about now is this France 24 article. Now, France 24 is major. I'm going to be looking right over here. I'm going to read through this article with you. It's got some serious problems. And that's what we have to talk about. Because, as you know, what we want to do in this world is we want facts and truth to be clearly, observably evident uh, for the world to understand what's really going on and for people to not let themselves be lied to, be fed false information, distorted information. So we're going to do this real quick. France 24 news site. Okay, respectable news site. Um... 880 shares. This is France's major uh, English news site. Chinese social media pays tribute to virus whistleblower on his death anniversary. We've already got an enormous mistake. Dr. Li Wenliang was not a whistleblower. Not even close to being a whistleblower. Dr. Li Wenliang was a dentist who heard that there was a nasty new virus in the hospital and told his friends and family in social media. That's it. That's what Lee, Dr. Lee Wunliang did. More importantly is the two key points about that which you need to understand. Point number one, he got in trouble for doing that. Yes, any doctor in any hospital would get in trouble for sharing personal information on such a high priority, dangerous piece of information. Abs even in the United States, many doctors have been fired for speaking out of turn. It's not their place to speak about it. And that's absolutely right. You don't want to start rumors. Can you imagine today in the world of social media, saying the wrong thing can become wildfire. So. It's especially true. It has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with not wanting to be the source of the person who says, fire in a theater, which is illegal and wrong to do if there isn't a fire. It was a personal decision on his part to mention it to his family and friends in his social media, and he should not have done that. And as a hospital employee, he was reprimanded for doing so. That's point number one. That's perfectly clear, reasonable, and understandable. Point number two is they invest the, the uh, I'm going to go into this in the article, but point number two is the Chinese government did an investigation of what happened to him because he did end up speaking to the police. And whatever errors happened, they ended up, uh, publicly apologizing to him and declaring him a martyr to the country and honoring him and his family. That fact wasn't even mentioned in this article. So it's really, really unfortunate. All right, let me keep going here. Thousands of Chinese social media users paid tribute to Li Wenliang on Saturday, marking the one-year anniversary of his death, um, uh, the doctor who first blew the whistle on the coronavirus outbreak. Okay, right, like I said, he was not a whistleblower. He was just a doctor, that uh, a dentist, in fact, um, who sadly died because he caught the virus himself. 
Second point on how and why it is exactly, clearly, and factually, accurately true, he was not a whistleblower. The Chinese government wasn't hiding anything in the first place. Three, count. One, two, three. E R San in Chinese. Three days earlier, the authorities of Wuhan, the medical authorities, the CDC, the health division department people, had already been dealing with it and had already passed the information up. Okay? And approximately, I might be a little bit off on this number, but and approximately 10 days later, the CDC in the United States, Robert Redfield, the director, he himself personally said in congressional testimony that he was on the phone personally. His staff had been on the phone cooperating with the Chinese health officials days earlier. And he himself was also on the phone with them. Okay? This was January 1st and 2nd. So the matter was being dealt with. This is what you need to understand. No one would have, could have dealt with it any faster or any better. Now, the really interesting thing is WHO Director Bruce Alward said that in his famous press conference afterwards and, of course, got vilified for speaking the truth. He was remarkably surprised at how efficient and fast and transparent and aggressive the Chinese medical professionals were, getting to the bottom of what was happening as quickly as they could to understand a new virus that they had no idea what they were even dealing with. They had no previous knowledge and understanding whatsoever. They were at ground zero. Okay? This is the reality. Folks, why did it take several days? Because it took several days. That's what it would take to find out what the heck is going on. You don't want to report wrong information or false information until you can verify what the heck is going on. Okay? And, and, the, and the WHO, Bruce Alward clearly said, hey man, these, this was remarkable what we witnessed in China and them dealing with and uncovering it. I believe the genome sequence was then released to the world by January 14th. Technology now makes it amazingly fast to uh, get this kind of information and share it with all the other scientists of the world. So the world knew as quickly as possible. Okay. Dr. Lee, one of a group of doctors in Wuhan who shared posts on social media warning of a SARS-like virus in the central city uh, in a Wuhan, in December, was reprimanded by police for spreading rumors. Yes. Yes. Now, the investigation afterwards showed that they were not happy with the way he was handled by the police. I mean, to me, it's just like an employee matter at the hospital. Should, police shouldn't have been involved, didn't need to be involved. I agree with that. Um, he should have been told by hospital authorities. It was a thing about him as an employee of the hospital. Hey man, you don't talk about that stuff in public. It's not your place to do that. We disseminate the information as we think best. It's You're not in the chain of command and authority to do that, and this is true in any country. I don't care if it's Germany, the United States, uh, France, China, it's all the same. Okay, so 34-year-old ophthalmologist situation, sorry, I said dentist earlier, I meant to say eye doctor, right? Became public, making him a potent symbol of the perils of offering a different narrative from the official Chinese messaging. Uh, Dr. Wei Li Wenliang did not become part of being a potent symbol of the perils of offering a different narrative from the official Chinese messaging. There's no such thing as that happened whatsoever, as I just explained to you. He didn't offer a different narrative about anything. He had heard that there was a nasty virus. He mentioned it to his family on social media, and he shouldn't have done that. That's all 
Dr. Lee Wen Liang did, and this is crystal clear, not my personal opinion. The Chinese public embraced Lee as an ordinary man trying to do the right thing. Yeah, I mean, you can be scared and, and tell your friends and family when you're not supposed to because you're afraid. Sure, absolutely. But it's wrong in any country and you get in trouble for it. His wife was pregnant. He was soon to be a father. Man, you can understand the guy was afraid. He sent, he sent the rumor because he wanted to warn others. Yeah, yep, we understand that. Uh, that That's what you feel like you want to do, and you're not allowed to break hospital policy and do that. The public also watched as he then fell ill with the disease he was warning them about. Again, um, eventually he it, it got he worsened and died, and this was very sad. Most young people don't die from it. It's very tragic. Lee's death was initially reported by Chinese state media on February 6th. The next day, uh, Wuhan Central Hospital announced his death. But news outlets quickly withdrew their reporting. I, th this is just one of those comments of like, what? Just like, oh, see, so they were hiding something. No, no, no. no. You know, if they withdrew their reporting, it's because the the central government saw what was going on and said, hey, man, don't report about this yet until we know what's going on. Then we'll report on it, which is exactly what they did. Chinese people on Saturday grieved his death online and offline. Mourners brought flowers to the hospital online. Some people demanded for freedom of speech posts that were quickly censored. Good, because... All these narratives that there's not freedom of speech to discuss these things are nonsense and lies. There's lots of freedom of speech online and social media right now. I have a Weibo account, Douyin account. All kinds of people are posting hundreds of thousands of posts all about thinking about what happened with this pandemic, all free speaking, talking about all of those things. What's not allowed is to talk about them out of turn to talk about them in a disruptive way that upsets people, that you're spreading false information, absolutely that is censored. And I'm so glad I live in a country where that stuff is censored and people need to actually be civil and responsible about what they say in public. Over the past few months, the Chinese government has promoted an official narrative centered on its efficient handling of the outbreak. Yeah, uh, no argument about that. CNN Zeb Zechariah, two weeks ago, you can find it buried on the CNN website. Cheers to Zeb Zechariah. This, by the way, is a wonderful Hong Ye Cha, which is a wild red tea. It's absolutely amazing how it smells and tastes. The Chinese government promoted an official narrative centered on its efficient handling of the outbreak as local transmissions have largely been brought under control and censors swiftly scrub the more critical comments from the internet. No, no. Stop at have largely been brought under control as, again, Zeb, Zeb Zechariah said that uh, the, this was two weeks ago, the virus was virtually eradicated. What a word in China. And that is the case. I'm here in Shenyang, my previous video, check it out, a couple of them. I mentioned to you there was 18 uh, new cases in Shenyang here in the Northeast where we live, my wife's hometown. And because of that 18, they, where the cases were, they quarantined that area right? So everybody's like, you live in the neighborhood where there's a breakout. Your neighbor has the virus confirmed. And quickly it spread around 18 people. So all of you in this neighborhood, this square quarter mile or mile or whatever it is by block by block of apartment complexes, get your ass home and stay there. Oh shit. Yeah. Happy to. Happy to. Okay, until further notice, until we know what's going on and we get this thing under control and everybody in the whole rest of the city, we're told, start wearing masks, be, be cautious, you don't know who's where in terms of how this thing is spread. It's a zero tolerance policy here in China. Again, thank you. And most importantly, 
I, I mentioned to all of you that the city announced citywide testing. In three days, 8 million people tested. They did the same thing in Qingdao, Dalian, Chengdu, uh, a few other cities I, I don't quite remember. I, I think in uh, Uramuchi, in Xinjiang, Shanghai, I don't know if they did citywide testing. Anyway, you get the idea. A week later, a second citywide test. Second time citywide testing. Now, can you imagine being told, we tested 8 million people and only two or three more were found to be positive? The collective sigh of relief of 8 million people. Wow, they tested 8 million of us and only found a few more cases. Isn't that incredible? The collective sigh of relief of 8 million people who now have peace of mind. That's the Chinese government doing what it does. It's job. Yeah. Thank you, China. So here we are now, today, 26 days later in the city of Shenyang. I'm still here, folks. <clears throat> 26 days, no new cases in Shenyang proper. 26 days. Beautiful. So a year ago, the Chinese government was promoting, even in February, March, April, that uh, its official narrative centered on its efficient handling of the outbreak as local transmissions have largely been brought under control. And th that was back in February and March. And here I am now, a, a year later, and we're celebrating exactly that. So was that China doing PR promotion? Promoting its narrative? No, it was China sharing the facts of what it was doing. But Lee's personal, so uh, as local transmissions have largely been brought under control and censors swiftly scrub the more critical comments from the internet. Again, absolutely yes. Censors crazy wanting to keep the society stable and safe and people not panicking and believing stupid rumors about where did the virus come from. Uh, you know, bat soup and, you know, nobody in China ever, I mean, 21 years in China, nobody eats bats ever. So, I mean, this is a good example of the kind of rumor you stamp out. You don't allow and you keep the society safe and everyone in it. Okay, so that's your individual freedom because they also protect the society. You're not free when you're at threat because people all around you are out of control. That's individual freedom. But Lee's personal page on the Twitter like Weibo platform. Follow me on Weibo. My name, Mario Cavallo in English, and my Chinese name, Ma Yi Jun. Yi da li de yi, Jun Ma de Jun. On Weibo. Follow me on Weibo by my by my name, please. Um, I'm promoting a lot on Weibo now. It's a great platform. So Lee's personal page on the Twitter like Weibo platform remains a rare space. It's now like a church. It's an online church. It's amazing for users to commemorate the trauma of the early outbreak after the country imposed a strict lockdown on millions of people in Wuhan and surrounding Hubei province. This is must have an added sentence. After the country imposed a strict lockdown on millions of people in Wuhan and the surrounding Hubei province. I have to emphasize, emphasize this to you. The lockdown was nationwide immediately after Wuhan and the surrounding Hubei province. The entire country, all other provinces, I was asked to do the translation of the Chinese document to polish it for the Liaoning government here in Liaoning province. So the other 25 provinces and regions of China all of them, we all collectively went into lockdown. Please go read, watch my video, read my article about, if you want to understand how China stopped the virus, read this. It's on LinkedIn. It's got 250,000 views. That article did really well. And we all collectively locked down. The entire country of China, 1.4 billion people was shut down for six weeks. I'm sitting here, folks. This is the main road, 8 Hunan Lu, Huinan Lu, eight lanes, Wanda Mall, you know, famous Wanda group, Xinglong Mall, 
Hua Chung Mall, the other main road, all the restaurants. This is my neighborhood, typical crowded Chinese city, right? Like Hong Kong, even other Asian cities like Bangkok, right? Just crowded everywhere you go. Go downstairs and everything you need and want is right there. It's fantastic, okay? I'm t I was looking out at that mall, that mall, that mall, the, the Olympic Stadium, which is one kilometer away, away. Folks, it was deserted for six weeks. Everything was shut down. Do you understand me? Everyone was home. I was home with my boy. Okay, for six weeks. And don't tell me it was easy. Don't ask me if it was easy. It sure as heck wasn't. But on the other hand, it was okay. We were safe. It was good. We were allowed to go out when we needed to, to one of two grocery stores. One was over there. One was over there to buy groceries. And we arrived at that grocery store. We had to scan our QR code wearing masks of course go in buy our groceries go back home and we were and then scanned in and out of our gate of our apartment complex where we live right down there that's it you understand me that's what we did the entire country not just the people of Wuhan and the surrounding Hubei province to keep everyone safe now of course Wuhan had a very nasty outbreak so it was rough for a lot of those people okay and that's very sad as well. It's tragic and sad when bad things happen to human beings in any country. Commenters marked the anniversary of his death with thousands of messages ranging from candle emoticons to updates on their own lives addressed to the late doctor. And yeah, this is so nice. You know, again, so his 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 Weibo has become a center center point, you know, a, a, a beacon of light. It's nice, you know. You live, in, you live forever in the hearts of the Chinese people, and that's certainly true. In Wuhan, city itself, however, showed few outward indications of mourning. So Wuhan didn't do any special outward activities uh, specifically. They just left it to individual people doing that. Okay. Uh, signs of tributes outside, there was little signs of tributes outside Wuhan Central Hospital uh, where the 24-year-old where the ophthalmologist first warned colleagues of the mysterious new virus. Yes, again, they all chose. Uh, the city's been, as you know, Wuhan had that big pool party a few weeks ago. Um, or pool, pool party, was it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the city's getting back to normal, and okay, they didn't arrange any public parades or anything. Fine. I don't know why. The city where the virus was first detected is now playing host to a delegation of the World Health Organization inspectors searching for clues to the source of the pandemic in China. Searching for clues to the source of the pandemic. Period. I added the words in China because the clues to the source of the pandemic in other countries, follow me very closely, we now know is not China. That's not a conspiracy theory. That's a known fact. Okay? All you have to do is Google it. Several original sources of the strain of coronavirus have been found in several other countries well before the Wuhan outbreak, which became the first publicly well-known outbreak, soon followed by the next nasty outbreak in northern Italy. While I'm at it, when Wuhan locked down, all international flights stopped too. Niall F Ferguson, said, I think it was him, said that wasn't true. International flights continued, but the flight radar website, you can check again, Google it, clearly showed no, 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 no. All international flights stopped the moment the city was also locked down. So again, loving to debunk the rumors and crap that's out there. The inspectors, by the way, side note, are now in Wuhan, and today there is an AP News article where Peter... Dazak told the Associated Press on Friday team members had submitted a deeply considered list of places and people to include 
in their investigation and there were no objections whatsoever. In fact, his comment, every place we asked to see, everyone we wanted to meet. And he said, uh, mm -hmm. they were met during their visit to the High Security Institute of the Wuhan Institute of Virology with a level of openness even he hadn't anticipated and that suspicions surrounding it had been politicized on a global scale. You know, screw Trump and Pompeo. Thank you, God, these people are gone Divi uh, for sowing hate and divisiveness toward Chinese like Hitler was sowing it toward the Jews. What a disgusting and reprehensible thing to do. And can you imagine being the leader of America, a wonderful country, in so many ways, and acting that way and doing that? And to this day, many people who are American government people are still doing that, promoting these lies about China, like the genocide in Xinjiang and all this other garbage. It's just really reprehensible and disgusting. Going back to France 24, and we're done. The sensitive mission which China had delayed throughout the first year of the international health crisis had already, has already visited the Huanan seafood market where many of the first known patients had worked. So in China, you can understand a very simple thing. And it's true, Hong Kong's experiencing it these days, right? They're having a tough time keeping it under control. It's because, you know, markets and neighborhoods in China um, in these kinds of cities are really crowded. Um, and it's tough, really, really tough to, and you can understand that that's where viruses would spread. The experts have also toured a controversial Wuhan Virology Institute at the heart of conspiracy theories about the disease's origin. We're back to the France 24. What a stupid comment based on everything I just said to you in this video, right? Based at the heart of conspiracy theories about the disease, diseases, diseases origins. Yeah, this is exactly what has caused so many problems. The Western media promoting these conspiracy theories when China's just been reporting on the facts. Life in Wuhan, a city of 11 million, has largely returned to normal. Uh, life throughout China with its 250 cities, all of whom have like at least 4, 5, 8, 10 million people, has returned to normal, uh, with bustling shopping malls and lively night markets a month after the world's first COVID lockdown was lifted in April. So there you have it, folks. I wanted you to know very clearly, again, exactly how it, is it was that Dr. Li Wenliang is not a whistleblower, and that here in China, the Chinese government itself had clearly done an investigation about what happened to Dr. Li, apologized for the police getting involved, though he, had never, he was never put in jail. He was only spoken to by them um, and questioned by them. Um, but still, he shouldn't have been. They should have just let the hospital handle it. And the Chinese government and completely neglect on the occasion of his anniversary of his death, this, this story on France 24 completely neglects to mention that this public investigation was done. The findings of the investigation were issued including a public apology to Dr. Lee and his family and making him a martyr forever in the eyes of Chinese country and the Chinese people and honoring his family. So that's the story. It's a great, wonderful story. Um, the follow-up of this story is something that Chinese people and the Chinese government should be so proud of. All of us who live here are so glad we live here. We're so glad we're here, right? Would you leave? None of us want to leave. Um, there's some friends that I know who are leaving to go travel out, and you know, they're, they're just not going to do so with an abundance of caution. That's it, friends. I'm done for today. Please, if you like this video, and check out all my other videos, do subscribe. Hit the no notification bell. Hit the like button. I'm supposed to remember to say these things to you at the end of every video. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye.